Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your first synth part using a MIDI controller in Reaper. Now, I've actually made two videos showing how to create your first synth part. In this video, we're going to trigger that synth with a MIDI controller or keyboard. In the other video, I used a sequencer. If you prefer to see that video, it should be right next to this one on the Reaper Video homepage. But in this video, we're going to trigger our synth with a MIDI keyboard, but we're going to play it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to download a drum loop to play along with our synth, just to keep it more interesting. So let's go to our search engine and type in Reaper Stash. Then we'll go to the website right here, and we're going to search first synth part. Then we'll click on this drum loop here and download it. Then we'll go back to Reaper and go to our directory on our hard drive, which is the Explorer on PC with a Finder on Mac, and find that file, which is right here. But let's first change the tempo of our song to 128 which is going to match that loop. Then we'll drag this in to Reaper and place it right on the bar. So it's playing from bar one to bar five. So let's loop it by creating a time selection, turn on looping down here and play it. That's going to play in the background of our synth. Let's give this track a color. I'll use green. Let's make another track for our synth. Let's put it above here. Name it synth. Give it a color. Something like this. And let's set the input to my MIDI controller. MIDI, USB keyboard, all channels. Then turn input monitoring on and put it into record. So now if I play my keyboard, I should see level on this meter. And I do. If you don't have a MIDI keyboard, you can use the virtual MIDI keyboard that's built in. Go to View, and go down here, Virtual MIDI Keyboard. Then we can trigger our synth with the computer keyboard, right over here, using these keys. And then you can set it up with your input to Virtual MIDI Keyboard, All Channels. But I'm using a MIDI keyboard that's plugged in to here. All channels. So we have level on my meter. We're ready to put a synth on this track. Let's go to our effects. Let's go to our instruments and choose Resynth or Reasynth, which is a synth that comes with Reaper, so I know you have it. Let's double click it. And this is a very simple synth. By default, it's just a sine wave. But we can make it more interesting by adding in a sawtooth wave. Bring it all the way over, and it sounds like this. And we could also add in an extra sine wave right here. But let's pitch it down first, right over here, to minus 1200, which is an octave down. Then we can mix in a sine wave to create a lower octave. That feels good there. Now it still sounds a bit simple. So let's add in a filter after this. Let's double click over here. Now let's go to the Reaper plugins and go to re-EQ, which we could use as a filter. Double click it. Let's remove all the bands except for one and change it to a low pass filter, which is going to make it sound peaky. And we can adjust how peaky right over here with the bandwidth. Let's bring it down so it's really nice and peaky. Let's bring down the gain so it doesn't distort. Now let's hear it. That 
that's a bit more interesting. Let's leave it around here, but in just a bit, we're going to modify it so it moves to create a more dynamic effect. But let's first create a keyboard part. Let's close this. Now we could record this part just by going to record and playing it from beginning to end, but I want to first create a MIDI item that we can record into. I find this a lot easier when working with MIDI, as instead of creating takes on every loop, we can just record over and over again and add new notes. But let's first turn on the metronome as a count off. Let's right click it and turn off playback and recording and just turn it on for a count in. Change it to one bar, which will give us a one bar count in before we record. Close it. And now let's switch our recording mode right over here from recording input to record MIDI. And then we could choose record MIDI overdub, which again will allow us to loop record without creating takes. Choose this. Let's make a MIDI item that goes from bar one to bar five. Hold down control on the PC or command on the Mac and just draw from here to here, which creates our MIDI item, which we could double click to open up the MIDI editor. And let's zoom in so we're focused on the area right here between C3 and C4, which we're going to record our melody. And the melody goes like this. So it starts on E4. Now, if that's too hard to play at once, we could play it in pieces. Because once again, we're in MIDI overdub mode. So we could just record this part at the top of each phrase, like this. I was going to record. And we stop playing. We hear it in playback. So now we could add the pieces in between. And the piece in between, right over here, goes like this starting on the B3. So let's record that. And it plays back after we record it. Now let's play the part right over here, which starts on the G3. Again, it plays back automatically. Now, if we're happy with the part, we can quantize it so it's better in time because it's a bit sloppy. So we'll go right here to this Q button and hit it. And we'll use the settings, use grid. And then we'll change our grid right here to eighth notes. So it's going to quantize on the grid the position and the note end, because we choose position, note, and end, not just position. So each one of these is exactly an eighth note long and quantized to the nearest eighth note. So let's hear that. Now the notes at the end over here, I want them to be a bit shorter. So let's zoom in. Let's change our grid to be 16th notes. Select the last three notes and make them a 16th note long or half as long. And we'll do the same with these three. Select them all and make them half as long. So now our part 
sounds like this. But each note could still be a bit shorter. So let's zoom in really close because I don't want these notes to connect. Let's select them all. Hold down shift as we trim the right side, which is going to ignore snapping while we trim the length of our notes. Let's make it just a bit shorter from what it was. It was right here. Let's make it about here. In fact, we could hear it in real time if we play it while we move it. That sounds better there. So we have our part and it's quantized and perfectly in time and we're happy with the length of our notes. But we could still work on the sound. So let's close this and let's go back to our EQ. Let's select the frequency. So it's the last touched parameter and go to the menu here and turn on parameter modulation, which is where we can modulate this frequency or this parameter. Let's start off with audio control signal and we can trigger it from itself using channels one and two and the louder it is, the more it changes our filter. But it's a bit too low, so let's readjust the minimum volume and the max volume so the travel over here is as far as possible. So bring this down. Then we could adjust the strength, which decides how far it moves. So where we set this is really based on personal taste. If you like a more filtered sound, bring it down. If you want more buzz, bring it up. Now let's add some delay to create an echo effect. Right here, we'll go to the Reaper plugins and choose Read Delay. Bring down the wet so it's not so loud. Change the length to an eighth note. And let's hear it. Let's pan it to the left. Let's add another tap or delay and pan that one to the right, but change this to two eighth notes or a quarter note. It gives it more motion and it's also a bit wider. Then we can add a reverb. Let's go to this plugin, Reverberate. Bring the dry up, bring the wet down. Let's bring the room size up to about here. So just like that, we created our first synth part but we could alter it by changing the parameter modulation. Let's go back here, and instead of using audio control signal, let's use an LFO instead. And now we could change this with the tempo. Let's make it four quarter notes or a whole note. Bring down the strength so it doesn't move as far. Bring up the bass line so it moves where we want it to. Now it sounds like this. Or 
we can make it faster for more radical effect. We can also pan it using parameter modulation. Let's add a volume plugin, all plugins, volume. Let's choose volume pan smoother version 5. And let's put it before the delay. But after the EQ, then we can automate the pan by touching it last, go up here, and choose parameter modulation. And again, go to the LFO. Let's choose centered so it moves left and right. And let's hear that. So there's so many different things we could do with this. But for now, this is our first MIDI synth part in Reaper. I hope you learned something. I hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh!